Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Inhale Scream. I'm Adam, this is Gabby. Hey guys. Today is Monday, April 6, 2020, and we have a really fun show for you today. Today we're going to cover the headlines coming out of the Yucatan, and then because it's a Monday, we are not going to have a call today. Uh, instead, we're gonna have our first quarantine cooking segment. Cool, sounds like fun. Today in Mexico, we've reached a total of 1,890 confirmed cases of coronavirus. Here in Yucatan, we have 62 confirmed cases. The state of Quintana Roo has 75 confirmed cases, and the state of Campeche has eight. With that, we do want to take a minute to just talk about how inaccurate these numbers are. We don't want you to listen to these numbers that we're reporting every day and feel like Mexico is somehow being spared by the virus because these numbers aren't growing as fast as you might see somewhere else. But there are reasons for that. And uh, we've been trying to say this on our show over the past few days, but one of our friends left a comment on our video and was able to express it a lot better than I can. Thank you guys for your comment, that's really helpful. It's very difficult to explain this kind of numbers situation without a background in numbers, so thank you for sharing that, we really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Just coming from us, it's really scary to see how much people are relying on these numbers for their information about the virus. Literally, it's just numbers. So, stay inside your house. Yeah. Don't, go, don't go out if you don't have to. Do the best you can to stay inside, protect yourself and your family. It's the best we can do right now. Um, on a sad note, we had our first death in the Yucatan this weekend uh, from coronavirus. It was a 36-year-old man. This is just the first person here to have passed away from this, and um, it's really hard because we know that there are going to be a lot more, and it's really hard to report these kinds of things. We, we want to just send our condolences to the family and our our deepest sympathies, but it's hard to know that there's going to be so much more of this going forward. It's it's very difficult to just express how bad this feels. We also learned that one of the 48 passengers who was escorted off the Morella Explorer 2 cruise ship last week in Progresso has passed away in a Merida hospital over the weekend. We originally reported that all of those passengers had been flown back to the United Kingdom but over the weekend, we found out that two passengers had been kept behind in intensive care. We're sad to learn that one of those passengers has since passed away. Here's a fun story coming out of the Port of Progresso. They've started using drones to disinfect public areas such as parks, playgrounds, and even city streets. As a drone pilot myself, I've been particularly interested in the use of drones in Progresso. Last week we reported that they were using surveillance drones to monitor the beaches and they've also been using loudspeakers from the drones to kind of scare beach people away, which I thought was interesting and maybe a somewhat of a dystopian look into our future. But now that they're spraying chemicals out of the drones, I think that like some of my most dystopian nightmares are seeming like everyday realities more and more. So I don't know how everybody else feels about that. I'm excited that Progresso is um, taking action and, and trying to kill the virus. But just the idea of drones flying overhead, spraying chemicals on the population, just to me, really scary. Like real life scary stuff. Yeah. But the report does say that the chemicals are not harmful to humans, but uh, it's, <laughs> I don't know. I don't really know what to say. There are drones flying overhead spraying chemicals on the city. That's it. That's, that's the reality we live in now, everybody. Let's keep going. Am I crazy? No. Okay. The last thing that we want to report on today is that the president spoke to the country announcing a big stimulus plan that he has for the nation. We did catch some of this speech live today, uh, but it, our Spanish is not amazing, so we weren't able to understand everything. But from what we've read and what we've seen in some of the initial reports is that the president has talked about cutting some of the salaries from his government employees and taking away some of the bonuses that they would typically be receiving in order to put that money into small and medium-sized business loans and uh, help for the people who've lost their jobs in this situation. So to us, it seems like a good thing so far. We don't know much about Mexican politics and, and the way that these politicians speak 
It's all new for us, so if you have something to say about the president's speech, please leave us a comment in the box below. We're trying our best to understand all of this stuff, but as foreigners here, it's extra difficult. So if you know more about this and have something to say about it, by all means, share it with us. We're, we're all learning together here. Just a real quick personal update before we jump into our cooking segment. Um, yesterday, the three of us went out to the grocery store. Instead of going to Walmart, this time we tried to go to a closer grocery store to see what that was like. When we arrived, they were only allowing one person in from each group. So I went in and I quickly grabbed fruits and vegetables and tried to stay in my distance away from people. Um, it was a really weird feeling in the grocery store yesterday and like the whole time I just was like telling myself to like breathe, it's going to be fine, but don't breathe too deep because you don't want to breathe in the same breath that someone else has been breathing. So I don't know, it's definitely like a high anxiety situation, um, especially having to go in alone. It was really scary. I don't, I don't like it that the grocery store is now scary. Like I used to love going to the grocery store and now it's like just horrifying to think about. So I'm not trying to be over dramatic here. <laughs> It just is like stressful and um, I don't know, you never feel like you're being cautious enough. So people weren't like super far apart from each other all the time, but like tried to keep their distance. I think there were sections of the grocery store where there was no one and I was like feeling pretty good in my own bubble. But when I was waiting online, like the Aki grocery stores here have like a different way of lining up and dealing with the um, registers. and. Uh, you end up getting like real close to a lot of people when you're doing that. So um, I think we're going to pass on the hockey for the future. Yeah, sounds like it. You also said that everybody was crowding around the beer. Yes, that, there was definitely a significant number of people around the beer section and just like kind of people stockpiling. Yeah, we've heard lots of reports of panic buying when it comes to beer here, mm -hmm. which is funny because in the United States we heard all about the panic buying of toilet paper. Mm -hmm. Here we've had toilet paper the whole time, but now people are freaking out that beer is going to stop being sold in stores. Yeah. It's also a fear right now that the breweries are going to stop producing beer because the government oh, really? said that they're not essential businesses. Oh. So the breweries are going to be likely having to stop production, which means that the beer is going to just run out. Out. Even if the government gotcha. doesn't enact dry laws in the city, mm -hmm. the beer could just run out if the if the producers can't keep producing. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely there are a story to watch. Yeah, there are a lot of fears uh, among the population that the, the alcohol is going to dry up here. Okay. Which I mean, they're totally founded fears for them because the yeah. the small towns around have all closed down alcohol sales. So yeah. we're just waiting for that to happen here in Merida. We're not sure if it's going to, but when it does, we'll report it. Mm -hmm. That's probably it for our news today. Yep. Next, we have a fun cooking segment for you where we're going to cook one of our favorite Mexican dishes that's really easy to make at home yeah. and always delicious. Yeah. Like if you're home and you're stuck at home and you're cooking like your regular, normal, staple foods, some point that's gonna get kind of stale. So I wanted to kind of give you guys an idea of something different to do with mostly the same ingredients that you probably already have at your house. Yeah, so let's go to the kitchen. <laughs> hey guys, come on into the kitchen. Okay, so today we want to show you guys a Mexican breakfast dish called chilaquiles. Traditionally, chilaquiles is eaten as a hangover cure breakfast, and it contains a few particular items that you will need for this dish. Tortilla chips, your salsa, which is going to be traditionally rojo or verde, or you can mix it up and do like mole, or if all you've got in your refrigerator is mango habanero, I say go for it. Next, you've got your protein. Today, we're gonna do eggs, which is my favorite. Um, you can also do shredded chicken or chorizo or whatever kind of protein you want to add to your chilaquiles. After that we've got our veggies. So veggies you can add really whatever you want but today we're going to add tomatoes, onions, uh, some avocado, get creative. Some other things that you can add for toppings include queso fresco which would be your typical. Today we're going to use feta cheese because that's what I've got. 
crema, which if you don't have regular crema fresca, you can do uh, sour cream or Greek yogurt. Any other cheese you wanna add to it, like cheddar cheese or make it you. So we're gonna put it all together. The first thing we need to do is cook up the eggs and the onions because this whole thing just sort of gets put together all at once. Otherwise, it's gonna be real sun. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this recipe for chilaquiles. Um, let us know how you do it at home and please send us a picture of your chilaquiles. All that's left now to do is mash this baby up and eat it. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching another episode of Inhale Scream. It's been a pleasure to have you with us. If you're new around here, please hit that subscribe button. It really means a lot to us. And if you're already subscribed, hit the notification bell so you'll always know when we have new videos coming out. Yeah, we really appreciate you guys uh, coming back and sticking around and any comments that you guys give us. So it really keeps us going and yeah. um, it's tough times out there. So keep an eye out for each yeah, other. Yeah, let's stick together. Leave yeah. us a comment. Let us know how you're feeling. Tell us how things are going in your area. We've gotten some great messages this week from people in different places. Mm -hmm. uh, we heard from a viewer in Veracruz this week, which was cool. He said that they still have restaurants open there. Wow. Wow, yeah. So things are different everywhere, obviously. Mm -hmm. Tell us what things are like where you are. We're really interested. And we really appreciate you watching. Thank you so much for coming back and watching us every day. It really means a lot to us to be able to build this kind of community here through this channel mm -hmm. and be able to have people to speak with every day through this. So yeah. it means a lot to us. Thanks for watching.